When most people think about northern Michigan, it's probably things like natural beauty and tranquility that come to mind. Or maybe sandbars and campfires in the summertime like Kid Rock sang about. But every now and then, in late summer or early fall, a big surge of cold air barges in, disrupting the area's relaxed, secluded character with a weather phenomena that's common to the Great Lakes. Water spouts. Oh, hey, good morning, everybody. It is um, really early out here in northern Michigan, and you might be wondering why I'm dressed like a burglar, and the answer is because I'm chasing. In fact, uh, there's a really, 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 really cold air mass that just moved into northern Michigan. It's the first big cold one of the year, and it moved in over some really warm lake water that's still warm from the summer, and that is a really good recipe for water spouts. So we're going to see if we can catch some. Stay tuned. To better understand how I ended up at that cold beach so early in the morning, let's back it up a little bit to the day before. On October 11, 2019, a powerful storm system was beginning to move over the Great Lakes after trekking across the country, leaving significant snow and wild temperature swings in its wake. The Great Lakes very much affect the weather in Michigan. In the spring and early summer, they're still full of cold water and can weaken surface-based storms as they move into the lower peninsula from Wisconsin and Illinois. In the fall and winter, though, they're usually warmer than the air above them and generate persistent cloud cover and quite often generate their own weather in the form of lake effect snow. If the right ingredients come together early enough in the fall, however, you can have really cold air over relatively warm water. Because warm air rises, updrafts start to form, which creates low pressure at the surface of the water below the updraft. These convective updrafts form clouds and sometimes cause some light rain. While all that's going on, air rushes in from the higher pressure areas around the updraft, causing the updraft to rotate. If the updraft is squeezed and focused enough, a vortex can form, and that's how you get fair weather water spouts. Hey everybody, how's it going? Happy Friday! We made it, and I'm thinking about going out and chasing tomorrow, maybe even Sunday too, we'll have to see and I'm gonna be looking for water spouts. So I wanna give you a quick little sneak peek as to what goes on behind the scenes before I go out and chase. So check it out, I'll show you. All right, so this spreadsheet that we're looking at is something that I put together based on the research of a gentleman named Wade Szilagyi. And he has researched water spout development extensively and I've studied his work. What he's found is that there's two real key factors, or I guess three real key factors, two and a half real key factors that dictate whether water spouts are likely to form or not. The first one is what's the difference in temperature between the water surface and the air aloft, specifically at 850 millibars. If you've got nice warm air down near the water and really cold air aloft, that warm air is gonna to wanna to move up because remember, warm air rises, and that's how you kickstart an updraft. The second thing that he's looking for is what's the convective depth? How buoyant is that air? And the way that you can do that is to measure how tall the cloud is that that updraft is generating. And the way that you measure how tall a cloud is, is to look at the base of the cloud, something that meteorologists call lifted condensation level, or LCL, and the tippy top of the cloud, which is something that meteorologists call equilibrium level, or EL. The difference between those two numbers is how tall the cloud is. And you want a big difference between those two numbers to have a nice, strong, robust updraft if you want a good chance of seeing a water spout. The third thing, or I guess this would be the second and a half thing, is what the winds aloft are doing, also at 850 millibars. And all we're looking for here is that they're below 40 knots. If they're above 40 knots, even if a water spout were to form, there's a good chance it would get blown apart before it ever condensed or before we could ever see it. So we want those to be under 40 knots for any location we're thinking about chasing at. So what I've done on the spreadsheet is I've, I've picked some locations I think I might want to chase at here. These all have good views of Lake Michigan. And I've got the GPS coordinates for them right here. And what I've done is I take those GPS coordinates and I plug them into the weather models. You've heard me mention the weather models before in other videos. And when I plug those coordinates in, the weather model gives me something that looks like this. This is called a forecast sounding. And what it is, is it's for some time in the future, 
what the weather model thinks the atmospheric conditions will be like at that particular point at that particular time. And so I can look at what's going on up here in the atmosphere as I go up. I can also look at some of the convective data here, and I use this to get the numbers that I then plug into my spreadsheet. Once I plug the numbers in, the spreadsheet plots them on the SWI, which literally stands for Silagi Water Spout Index, and it tells me how likely I am to see a water spout at these spots given these parameters. And it looks like we're kind of in the, I don't know, low to medium likelihood, but I'll take that. It seems like the temperature difference is there, but our limiting factor might be that convective depth or how tall the clouds are. That's not very big, but we're still in the sweet spot, so we have a chance and I'll roll with that. The nomogram over here tells me if I do see a water spout, what type it might be, and that's kind of cool. And I do something similar to this in the warm weather months as well, when I'm chasing mesoscale level weather. So things like supercells, tornadoes, linear storm modes, stuff like that. Uh, it always pays to put in your diligence ahead of a chase if you don't want to be disappointed. Um, you can certainly go out blind if you want, but your likelihood of not seeing anything uh, is a lot higher if you don't have at least a little bit of forecasting skill. So this is something that I work on during the off season. But anyway, as long as I did this right, we have a somewhat decent chance of seeing water spouts tomorrow and maybe even into Sunday. We'll see if the models change. They have a tendency to do that, um, but we'll see how it goes. So wish me luck. And my luck appeared to be getting better. As it turned out, while I was shooting that clip, the International Center for Water Spout Research, which Wade Szilagyi runs, by the way, released a water spout forecast map that backed up my forecast. It's always a good feeling when people who know way more about stuff than I do come to the same conclusion. Starting the instant I got to the beach on Saturday morning, there were already water spout funnels visible in the sky. Come on, where'd you go? Come on, camera. There you are. Because fair weather water spouts like these form at the surface and then grow up into the cloud, seeing a condensation funnel up at the cloud base likely means that the vortex actually does extend all the way to the ground, but just isn't condensed all the way. Here's an example. Some people might just assume that this is a simple cold air funnel because they don't see a darkened tornado-like cloud structure reaching all the way down to the water. But the visible spray ring at the surface tells us that it is there even if it's invisible to us. In addition, the water spouts that I saw on Saturday morning were very short-lived and transient, only lasting for a minute and sometimes even less. But as soon as one would dissipate, another would form somewhere else. I was constantly swinging my camera around trying to capture them. It was like playing water spout whack-a-mole. So Michigan's not really known for a lot of severe tornadic storms during the traditional severe weather season. But one thing that's pretty cool about this state in the fall time is we get a lot of water spouts. Because of the Great Lakes being all warm, when really cold air aloft moves in, we get water spouts, which is the, the warm, humid air kind of rising up into cumulus congestus clouds and, and forming uh, a little mini tornado over water. And so that's what we're out here looking for today. We're in Charlevoix, Michigan. And I'd say since this morning uh, at daybreak when we got out here to the beach, I've seen maybe 30 of these things so far, which is pretty impressive. The record for one day, by the way, is 64. I don't think we're going to come close to beating that. Uh, but still a pretty interesting day nonetheless. So I'm celebrating with some Michigan cider and donuts and uh, the conditions are gonna remain favorable the rest of the day and even into tomorrow for continued water spouts. We're getting some really cold air moving in. So uh, let's see what happens. We'll provide more videos if we get any more cool stuff. Till then, cheers. I drove south from the Charlevoix Spoutapalooza to another coastal Lake Michigan town named Frankfurt, where I set up to look for additional funnels. Unfortunately, the onshore surface winds were brutal, and I wondered if it would kill any water spout development. Some people were enjoying it, though. All right, so it's been a pretty successful morning. We captured 30 some odd water spouts and funnels uh, off of Charlevoix. And there's actually a round two of this stuff now that's uh, starting to show up a little bit south of there. We're in Frankfurt and uh, a few more uh, onshore bands of showers and precipitation are coming on shore in some pretty favorable conditions. So we're looking to see if we can catch any more uh, water spouts before the sun goes down. And look who I found today. I got Steve. What's up, Steve? Yeah, it's, it's me and uh, 
we're, we're sitting here, we're watching, and well, it's kind of a race against time here. The favorable conditions are moving in, and according to the National Weather Service out in Gaylord, their office said it best. Uh, it's coming. The models show it's coming. And then in their forecast discussion they had in parentheses, you probably just won't see it. <laughs> so, so what do you think? Uh, I got a hunch that we, we're probably not going to see it. It's, right. it's going to be right at the end of the, the daylight cycle we got here. Uh, we, we have one more round of cloud base I'm watching come in. But after that, I think that's probably going to be a wrap. We've got these strong winds, and, I mean, you can't even go out there and walk, so. All right, all right. Well, they're actually expecting a little bit more of this stuff to come tomorrow morning as well. In fact, the fa uh, parameter space is going to be a bit more favorable, so uh, I think we're going to stay one more night, uh, see what happens in the morning, and then head home after that. Oh, actually, there's one there right now, so let's spin it around and grab that. Yep. Yeah, and it, sure enough, that parameter space coming in right at the end of our daylight here at 7.09. We got maybe 20 more minutes before we lose our visibility here, and we've got our first sighting, really, since we've came here to Frankfurt. There she is. That funnel would grow a little bit more, then dissipate, just as the rest of them had done all day. There were a few more after that, but it was too dark to get good photos and video, so I called it a night. After reviewing the model data overnight, it was back to Charlevoix on Sunday morning, to the exact same beach from the day before. That's snow. That is snow. But we're watching for water spouts out here. That's definitely snow. Can confirm it is cold. And while it took a long time for water spout activity to ramp up, once it did, it really got going. Yep, here comes the sleeve of the grapple or ow! Oh! Oh! Wow, that hurt. Look at it, wow. So that just happened. This is uh, what we got pelted with here at the beach, filming those water spouts. I can't really tell if it's grapple or sleet, maybe some really small hail. Either way, it's all over the beach. Look at that. I'm trying to film two water spouts. There's still two water spouts down back there, but uh, the rain's kind of covering them up. You really can't see them that well. They're back there. Let's see if they want to come out and play again. Preferably minus noise. And Mother Nature saved her best for last. After dropping multiple water spouts with much more well-defined condensation funnels than the previous day, the trip ended with this beautiful, fully condensed spout just north of my location in Charlevoix, which then headed toward shore and dissipated just south of Little Traverse Bay. In all, I honestly lost count of the number of water spouts I saw, but I'd ballparked the number around 40 or 45. It was a great way to close out the 2019 chase season, and I'm beyond grateful for it. I'm also grateful for your viewership and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and stay safe.